I did want a relationship with him, but I just played it cool. And um, eventually, I don't know how many months in, and he said, I think it's time that we break the ice and maybe you should officially be my girlfriend. Well, I kind of already made the decision that I wanted to be with her and like nothing changed. I thought it was going to freak me out, but it didn't. It was kind of the opposite. Take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple, Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. You're listening to Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian with Couples Synergy. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online at couplesynergy.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couples Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experiences with working with thousands of couples for over 15 years. You know, every day we get to hear intimate details about a couple's celebrations, disappointments, and everyday challenges. We've often wished these stories were shared because we know we are more similar than different. And so we've created not only an avenue where you can hear about people's intimate lives, but an atmosphere where people come over to our home pub pour a drink, and share their stories. People like today's guest, Scott and Tanya, welcome, hello, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and, and your story is a very interesting one, and it aligns with the topic of our podcast today, and that is the topic of commitment. Commitment. Before we get to that, why don't you both tell us a little bit about yourselves? How old are you? What do you guys do for a living? I'm Tanya. I'm 37 years old as of last week. I work in insurance. I'm a middle market territory manager for an insurance company. That's my story. <laughs> hey. hey, I'm Scott. Uh, I do HVAC commercial. It's about all you need to know about me at the moment, right? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> I'm 43. <clears throat> awesome. So why don't you guys tell us a story about how you met? Okay, this is a good one. So we met. I was almost 18, so that it doesn't seem creepy from Scott's end. Um, and I was, we were at, was it Chili's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was at Chili's with some girlfriends and him and two of his buddies came in on their motorcycles. And I actually thought his friend was cute. So my girlfriend bet me $10 to go up to the friend and ask for a ride on his uh, bike. And the friend didn't even look up from his sandwich. He was like not interested. And Scott said, I'll take you for a ride. <laughs> and uh, that was that. From your perspective, Scott, what was that like? Well, I was, you know, trying to pick up some girls, <laughs> and she seemed interested in that. So <laughs> you didn't really have to work hard. She walked right up to you. Well, right. So it worked out pretty good. Well, we're still together today. There's a lot in between all that. But Did we'll you guys start dating then? Um, well, actually, the first thing I said about Scott, I walked out to the car to my friends, and I said, Ugh. The ugly one took my number. <laughs> the and, ugly one. And um, <laughs> so he called and I was going to call him back because I thought his friend was cute. And we, my girlfriend and I had like nothing to do. So we were, I think we were like driving around, like going to McDonald's or something. We were young. And she's like, just call him back so we could maybe go to a party or something. So I called and we went to a party <clears throat> and uh, hung out and we kind of like, saw each other on and off, like casually. That's not really when we started dating. From that point on, I mean, I got into another serious relationship after that. So did he, but we always kept in touch. Like he, he actually always kept in touch with me. Like every six months, he'd call me. How come? Well, <laughs> uh, she always gave it up. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I mean, so why? Well, why would I not call? <laughs> <laughs> Be like, all right, see what Tiny's doing. <laughs> so when did you guys officially start dating? I was 24, so that was 2005. We started dating. He, uh, he, he called randomly, and I had just broken up with a boyfriend, and we met up, and we started seeing each other, and I was seeing you at the time, and I was, I liked him a lot, but I didn't want him to know that. 
And he actually told me at one point, he's like, I don't want anything serious. Me neither. <laughs> Which was not true, really. What was really true? I did want a relationship with him, but I just played it cool. And um, eventually, I don't know how many months in, he, we were at La Hacienda in Addison. And he said, I think it's time that we break the ice and maybe you should officially be my girlfriend. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was weird. And I had to drink a lot, though. <laughs> so you made an official statement. Right, I did. Well, I didn't answer him. I laughed and I never responded. And a month later, he said, are you going to get back to me on that question? And I said, wow, oh. that long. Yeah, I said, OK, I guess I could be your girlfriend. So I was always committed. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the topic commitment. Right. Now, it, it, what was going on in, in your head, Scott? And you're like to ask that question. Well, you know, I, I just ended up liking her more than I thought I was going to. Figured I'd go another level with it. And I drank a few beers and it came out. <laughs> <laughs> so you were kind of confused on where you guys were at or you just wanted to move to that next level. I just, well, I wasn't planning on, because I was in a serious relationship before that. Mm -hmm. And then... I wasn't really planning on getting into another one for a while. I just wanted to, you know, do whatever I wanted, not not be held back or down or whatever by anybody. And it just didn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. And so right around that time, how often were, were you guys seeing each other? I mean, before that, probably, I mean, we were together a lot. Like on the weekends. I mean, during the week, too. And mm -hmm. stay at your house. Yeah. Yeah, that that kind of came along. But I remember, like, you'd call me on, like, a Wednesday and be like, you want to go out on Saturday? And you, we'd, like, hang out on the weekends. And I would be so anxious for you to call and ask me out. And Jean would go, why don't you just call him? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a concept of sliding versus deciding. So a lot of couples kind of slide into the relationship like they just hang out and then someone's lease is up and they just sort of move in together and then they get engaged, but they don't really set a wedding date. And knowing your guy's story, it's really interesting to see how many times you actually like asked, asked her out, asked her to be your girlfriend, yeah, asked it, me to move in. Yeah, it is a little weird for <laughs> me. Well, it's just not as common in today's society now. Yeah. Most couples, they do just slide into these milestones in their relationship instead of making those distinct deciding, you know, lines and stage development in their relationship. So how long between him asking you to be his girlfriend and you guys living together? Maybe like a year and a half or so. Cause I, I think we moved in together two years after we started like seeing each other and he probably asked me to be his girlfriend months, six, eight months after we started seeing each other. I was living with a girlfriend. I had sold my condo and went back to school. I was living with a friend and um, decided that wasn't necessarily working out. I was going to move back in with my dad. I said, yeah, I'm going to move in with my dad and just focus on school. And he said, well, why don't you just move in here? And I think that was like the summer of 2007. So can yeah. you talk about that time and the transition you had to go through to actually live with him? Yeah. So... I met you, Jean, because <clears throat> I was struggling with some eating disorder issues. So I was living on my own, which was really bad for what was going on with me at that time. Then I moved in with a girlfriend and that was still really challenging to... Was she aware of what you were struggling with? She was, but then she became... She was trying to help me, but she became very hovery and questiony and concerned with everything that I was doing, which just irritated me. It gave it a greater focus. Right. I was working on boundaries with myself and with my family and all these sorts of things. And I mean, I remember at one point she knew I was going through working through some issues with my mother and she said, your mother's not allowed in this house. It's, you know, it was my house too, where I was living right. and your choice and my choice. Mm -hmm. And she was trying, she was definitely trying to be a good friend, but it just wasn't working. And so to move in with Scott, I had to finally tell him of what I was dealing with because I don't know that he knew that much before we moved in. And um, did you, Scott? No, I didn't. I didn't know. No idea. 
He thought I, I no was seeing, he thought I was seeing you for acupuncture. That's what I had told him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do acupuncture. No, she doesn't. <laughs> so, so what are some of the things that you were specifically dealing with in terms of an eating disorder, and how long had you been dealing with that? It was bulimia, and it was just a series of trying not to eat as much as I could, and then when I would need to numb myself, it was like a binge eat type scenario and purge. And it was... How old were you when you first started doing that? I don't really remember. It, I mean, it wasn't that long for him and I started dating, maybe a year or so. And it wasn't that, it got like progressively worse to get healthy boundaries and figure that all out. It's weird to talk about. It feels like a different yeah. life, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. not my life. So did, did telling Scott change that for you? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, the secret of it gave it a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Um, and then telling him that went okay. I, I thought for sure he's going to break up with me. Right. I'm crazy. I'm a, you know, I've got all these issues. He's going to not want to be with me. And that didn't happen. And then I was able to talk to more friends and family. And the more I talked about it, the less power it had. And, ultimately got a healthy relationship with food. It's hysterical. Like I love, like one of my favorite things to do now is cook. Awesome. Who would have who thought like that would be me when mm -hmm. I was like, food was so bad. Do you remember we would go out for Italian beefs? Uh-huh. At Johnny's. <laughs> that was awesome. Don't tell my dad. He owns Mickey's hot dogs. Oh, no. <laughs> what was that experience like for you, Scott? Uh, when I first heard it, I didn't know how to react to it, how I, what I wanted to do. Like with the relationship, because that I I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it was it was I I didn't know what to do really. Did, did you consider ending the relationship over it? It, it was in yeah. I mean, it's the easy way out. Yeah, sure. I why would I want to deal with mm -hmm. problems like that? But and then I guess the more I thought about it and talked to her a little more and learned about it, you know, try to help her with it and see where it went from there. So, but it was, it was really, I didn't know how to react to it really. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and he came in with <clears throat> me right. to see mm -hmm. you, the four of us which I was shocked mm -hmm. about. Right. You know. And you stayed a while too. I did. <laughs> I stayed a while. So instead of running, you actually went the opposite direction, actually closer to her try to help her right you know, get yeah. through that i did so how was moving in together <laughs> <laughs> stressful awful <laughs> i mean it was not fun for the first couple of years i mean the first year was awful because um we're both we both had lived on our own we're both very very stubborn and like things our own way. And when you live with someone and you're in a relationship with someone, that doesn't necessarily work to just get your own way all the time. It doesn't? No. <laughs> mm -mm. And you moved into his home. I moved into his home. He didn't really ever make that and like, you're in my house, you know. It was just a matter of, I can be very controlling and he can be very stubborn. And I wanted to... I, I was so, I think because of the stuff that I was struggling with, with the eating and the trying to figure myself out and trying to, obviously that the, the eating disorder for me, I think was a big part of, um, what am I trying to say here? Uh, masking mm. things that I need to deal with to get comfortable in my own skin and be happy and all this stuff. And so my whole, everything was, I was trying to control what I ate. I was trying to control that I didn't eat. I was trying to, and I was eating too much and screwing that up. And then I was trying to control him a ton. And it was like World War Three mm -hmm. in our house. I mean, it was horrible fights. Hor I mean, it, it was a rough, it was a rough couple of years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, I think I remember you guys kind of kept separate spaces for a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was that for you, Scott? I mean, well, at the time, I mean, it's what needed to be done, really. 
for just, you know, not a big house, not a place anywhere to hide and separate spaces, meaning like separate bedrooms, just to clarify. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Still have that bedroom ready to go. <laughs> In case I get evicted. As a backup, right? <laughs> so did you just kind of let her roll with whatever she had going on? I don't really remember at the time. I mean, I know we fought. We didn't go, you know, we didn't get along. We were fighting a bit. I don't know. I don't really remember. I don't think I really want to. <laughs> <laughs> were the fights about like the environment? You know, like putting a plant here or, you know, moving furniture here or this is my stuff. Painting the kitchen. Painting, yeah. You know, these kind of blankets or curtains, whatever. Not necessarily. No. I mean, I, I don't think we had issues. Well, it was you. You, A lot of the issue was, you know, this is your house. I feel like it's not my house. And, you know. People think it's your house and not our house. And that's where it eventually went. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of that. There was a lot of working together on a project. I mean, just like let's mm -hmm. landscape the front yard. Mm -hmm. You know, which way are we going to do it? My way or his way? Or I mean, it was a lot of. Trying to find that middle, that balance mm -hmm. and compromise. Mm -hmm. But you with a rototiller is hilarious to watch. <laughs> I just have to say that. <laughs> so there's some funny stuff in there. How, how long did you live there before Tanya moved in? I don't know, probably nine nine years. Did you have Eight roommates years? by yourself? No, I, I had roommates. I probably had three different roommates and pool table in a bar. You know, I was a little like frat house. Yeah, so, so how, how was that? Tanya moves in and goes from frat house to what? I didn't have the pool table anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was there for a little while, but, you know, the basement wasn't finished. And, you know, I just did what I wanted and drank beer and hung out. And so that changed. So, so getting Tanya in there toned things down a bit in that sense. <laughs> what do you remember from back then? As far as what changed? How it was living there. And I know that you guys, you know, he had a lot of company a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It w I mean, it was crazy. He had a roommate actually when he asked me to move in. And I was like, well, he's got to go. I mean, I was like, I'm not living here with someone else. It's not going to be three's company. So his roommate moved out and, you know, I didn't want a party every night and I didn't want a frat house. So I wanted it to be a home. Which I think he did too, but it was just, I probably was telling him how it was going to be instead of saying, how are you with making these changes or us mm -hmm. coming to common terms? It was more like, I'm not living like this. Well, you know, probably not the best way to do you remember approach that. Do you remember the walkabout? Oh, yeah. Can yeah. When, I, talk about when I made it to Itasca. <laughs> <laughs> After hours of getting you off the ledge. Yes, oh I remember God. that. So a walkabout is an assignment we give a lot of people where you go away to have time with yourself. So you're supposed to go somewhere you haven't been and really unplug no TV, radio, phone, internet, and just sort of do whatever you feel you want to be doing in that moment. Yeah. So I think Scott and I had gotten into a really big fight and we were actually, I think, talking about just splitting up and breaking up. I, I think this is when this happened. And I went and stayed at my girlfriend's house for a couple of days and then something happened. I was back home and I was losing it. We, we weren't getting along. I think and you guys had concert tickets that night. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because it was like bad good, timing and you're like, I've got to go. memory there, Gene. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she remembers our life better than we do. And I called you and I was in hysterics and I'm like, I can't do it. I can't go. We have plans. And you're like, just go. Just drive and go somewhere. Go away, no plan, no assignment. And um, we live in Glendale Heights and I made it to Itasca, which is about <laughs> nine miles away. <laughs> and I stayed at an extended stay America. I checked in and you said, no TV, just your thoughts, go for a walk. Now there's not a lot to see in Itasca. And it, I don't think the weather was that great. I just sat there and panicked mm -hmm. to like, what am I going to do with my own self? Because my own self was like, 
my worst enemy possible. And um, I stayed for two nights. I called you frantic about what, and you're like, fine, watch TV for an hour. <laughs> like, give yourself a break. I remember you saying like about 11 o'clock at night, you decided to go downstairs. There was a Walgreens or something and gave yourself a pedicure. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I did. I did. It was the first time I've ever done that. And I finally calmed down and realized, okay, I'm all right. I mean, nothing was going to happen. And I just chilled. And the whole next day I relaxed. And um, what were you doing during that time, Scott? Uh, I was relaxing myself. <laughs> Probably <laughs> drinking some beer and blasting music. Did, you, my did you go to the concert? I don't know. I go to a lot of concerts. <laughs> so I, how long into the relationship were you guys living together right now at this point when this happened? A year, maybe. Yeah, a year. Yeah. But you're living together. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys go from two separate bedrooms, right? Kind of fighting about creating this common ground and an us, right? To being in the same bedroom and creating that us. How long does, does that take? And how did, how did that happen? Well, we, we actually started doing the couples therapy with you, which I think was a huge transition for me. I don't know about for Scott. Um, it helped. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> and I think... I, I think the, the morning you came home from your walkabout was really pivotal. Yeah. Do you, each of you, either of you remember that? I remember coming home and everything had shifted. He was different. I was different. I, I, I take like the edge was off for me. I was in a different headspace. And I remember, I don't know if it was he missed me or he didn't like that I was gone or something like that, but it, it shifted. And the vibe had been like, get, he wanted me away from him, which cause I was just, you know, a woodpecker mm -hmm. driving him insane. Was. Driving my. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and it it had changed things just to have that separation for a minute. I, I remember you having just as hard of a time going back home as mm -hmm. you had leaving. Yeah. And you were worried there was gonna be people over and you know, and you said, and I came home and Scott's sitting on the couch and the whole house is clean. Yes. Oh my gosh. You are like so good at remembering this stuff. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure I missed you and probably. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that morning? It doesn't like stand out, but I remember the, I remember bits and pieces of it. Not the best memory. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that was a pivotal moment for the relationship. Yeah. Right. And so after that, things kind of shifted between the two of you, became much more balanced? Yeah, I think for me, I had this huge fear of rejection or disappointment or people disappointing me or not showing up the way that they're supposed to show up. So I was always waiting for him to do that to me. I was waiting for him, I mean, you just said it, to be having a party and not even care that I was gone and disappoint me. And, that, and it's funny because everything that I ever expected that he wouldn't do he had you know he's done he i said would you go and talk to gene and ray with me because i have to tell you about this eating disorder i'm struggling with okay remember <laughs> this is being recorded <laughs> <laughs> it's true and i think that was another like affirmation of he's not he's not gonna leave me he's not trying mm -hmm. to disappoint me he's not not showing up for me like he's here waiting with a clean house wanting to work things through. Mm -hmm. So so that kind of confirmed things for you that yeah. he was he was staying, right? And he was going to be working on the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are are not engaged at this point. I mean, you're just you're living together, right? right. How long did you guys live together before you got engaged? Before you got engaged? 5 years. 5 years. Mhm. Mm All right. So tell us that story. Yeah. Of getting engaged? <laughs> getting engaged or living for that long with it before getting engaged? Well, living that long before getting engaged and kind of how did you get to that point where 
you know, okay, it's time to move to that next level. Well, I, I was actually trying to make it to double digits. Like <laughs> I wanted to get to 10 years because being engaged freaks me out. Did you get a or t-shirt did, for that or did, something? Well, yeah. I don't know what you got for it. I was just trying to go longer. What was going through your mind? I was just, it just freaked me out. And I, I don't even really know why. You know, I think my parents are divorced and just marriage always freaked me out. I just thought everything would change and you'd be locked down. You know, I didn't even know, but in my brain, it was really scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just trying to prolong it as po long as possible. So just try to just not think about it, keep it off the table. Right. Hope she doesn't notice. Right. Yeah. You're like, I'm so great. You'll want me anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> did, so, did you notice? <laughs> That he wasn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would, we could talk about it several times. I thought he was proposing and he wasn't. How was that? Awful. That's a tough thing women go through because we don't get to know. And you think about it probably more because of that. Yeah. And I honestly didn't know. Right. Either time that she thought I was doing it. Didn't even cross my mind. D did you receive any pressure from her or hints or... Well, I, you know, I did, I didn't really get them very well though. You know, I didn't, <laughs> you didn't pick up on it. I didn't really pick up on them. No, I was kind of oblivious to it because I, I just didn't want it. I just didn't pick up on hints really. Mm -hmm. So why did you think those two times were going to be the time? Well, the first time happened, um, we were hosting, we were hosting Christmas at our house. There was a little wrapped package he always would wrap my gifts and put them in the stocking and under the tree and stuff. Gosh, whoever's going to end up listening to this, I'm embarrassed about the story. But there's this little wrapped package that sat on like our end table that he had wrapped and put there. And so, and it looked like the size of like a box. <laughs> and I, I knew Scott would never do like, you know, fireworks at the Cubs game or something <laughs> like, you know, that's just not him. He doesn't. He's not a grandiose gesture person, which is something I like about him. He's simple. And so we opened all the gifts and that just sat there and he didn't bring it and he didn't come up. And then everyone left. And I was like, what's that? And all day I had these like butterflies, <laughs> like that's it. It's, it's the time. I mean, this was probably three or four years into us living together. How far before you actually got engaged? Two years. So it was three years of us living together. So two years before you actually got engaged, you're thinking this is the moment. Mm -hmm. And so we've been to, we're, we've been together like five years now, right? Mm -hmm. It's time. <clears throat> I finally say, what's that? And he goes, oh, I forgot to put that in your stocking. Go ahead and open it. And I open the package and it's these things like I have on my wrist, hair yeah. ties. A, there yeah. are hair ties? A package of hair ties. <laughs> that's very, that's a thoughtful gift. <laughs> You might have to edit this next part out, but I'm just going to say it anyway. And I said, what is that? And he said, oh, it's crunchies. So oh. this way you can tie your hair up. It's the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> well, hopefully. Was that for you or for her? Well, no, she used to like, complain her hair would get in the way. So it was for her. I don't think you need to explain it. We all get it. <laughs> and then I spent the rest of the night crying, like on the front porch. I mean, I was, and he was like, what is wrong? I'm like, I, and I finally told him, I thought it was an engagement ring. I mean, that's a huge, big difference. Right. <laughs> so. You didn't even try your gifts. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. No, I did not. <laughs> Send it back. <laughs> So that was that Christmas. And then next Christmas comes and I get a gift that he's going to take me to some, I don't even remember the name of the restaurant, but it's that a restaurant downtown on the top floor. That, the 95th floor of the handcuff. And it spins. It's the Oprah, where Oprah lived. I forget the name of it. It, it circles around. Oh, oh, is that where we went? The revolving restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's like, I'm going to take you there in January. Okay, you know, how devastated I was last Christmas when I got the worst gift ever. And 
It's Christmas again. He, he had said, he goes, I would never do it on Christmas. Like I wouldn't take Christmas and make that our engagement day. And so we go in January to the revolving restaurant and we rotate around all night and we leave and it's over and we get in the car and he's like, you want to go to Friday's and watch the Hawks as I proceed to ball the whole way from the restaurant all the way to TGI Friday's in Bloomingdale sobbing. And he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, where's the engagement? No like, <laughs> no idea. We're <laughs> rotating around Chicago. Like, why are we doing this? <laughs> well, we were walking back to the car and she's like not saying a word, nothing. And I'm like, what is your problem? <laughs> you know, what is, What are you mad about? Oh, nothing. Don't worry about it. Nothing. I'm like, whatever. And then she said, how, how did you feel when she told you what she was upset about? Well, I thought, you know, I'm like, all right, well, I guess I could see how you would think that. <laughs> but I'm in my brain, I'm not ready for that. So I didn't think about it at all. Not yet. I was like, hey, let's have a nice dinner. Just That was it. Turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And this is how long before the actual engagement? A year before. The Another year. So, and, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So, next Christmas is approaching mm -hmm. and we have a conversation. And I'm like, I want to get married. And if we're not getting married, I'm done. Like, I'm. So, you're pretty direct then. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we'd, we'd gone into. To, Lots of couples counseling with you guys. I felt like we were in a good place in our relationship. I wanted to move to the next step. And I said, and I am not going through another Christmas without <laughs> an engagement. So figure it out. So you were ready to go. Yeah. It right. gave him almost a year. Yeah. To figure it out. Yeah. And I, would, I was sure from the conversations we had, it wasn't happening. And he said I was pressuring him and it was too much pressure and... um you know, I didn't want to be the girl that gives a guy an ultimatum, but I also was over 30. I knew what I wanted. I was like, if that's not where this is going and you're never going to do it, which is what it felt like at that point, then I'm out. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking, Scott? I was thinking I was being pressured after a short time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it felt like an ultimatum then for you. It, it was. A, well, it, you guys are I, seven years it, into it, this relationship at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. It, I mean, it was kind of an ultimatum, but it made me think, you know, what do I really want? And, I, you know, and I knew what I want already, but which was, which was to be with Tanya. But I didn't want to get married. I'm like, well, it's the same. If you're not married, what's the difference? Yeah. Three you know? more years anyway. Right. To get the double digits. Yeah, two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. Yeah. So you could have never gotten married. Well, now I don't think that. But then, yes. Okay. So how do you go from uh -uh to obviously I did buy a ring or something? Well, it's just a lot of thinking. You know, I talked to some friends and you know, just. Did they have good advice? Yeah, most of them. What'd they say? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you get the ring? Did you buy it before you proposed? No. Well, yeah. Before, yeah. So I called up her dad. So I call up her dad. I asked him if he wanted to go ring shopping with me. And he said, sure. So and I thought he knew a guy, but not really. <laughs> and we go there and. You didn't ask his permission or anything, but you just asked him to come shopping. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. Got it. If you ask me, <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> so. So we end up, we, we walk in and. They end up thinking we're a gay couple somehow. I don't know. How. <laughs> but like, we're here to look at rings. And they're like, oh, over here. I'm like, no, it's for his daughter, not for us. <laughs> I mean, he's too old for me. He's too old for <laughs> M Mickey is not going to have a good time listening to this. <laughs> oh. So, so I end up getting the ring. And I believe it was that same night, right? It, it was really funny that that night. I'm going to take over the story for a second. Did you have any idea? No. Thank and God. I was, I was. And that was my plan. Having a really bad, like I, I get really bad seasonal depression and I, I don't like the holidays for many reasons. It's like always had reminded me of, of divorce and having to shuffle from house to house. And so that like December time kicks in and I'm like it, I'm in a rough headspace. So I had talked to my friend, Megan, 
she was like, sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it. Just pretend you're happy and see what happens. So I was like, okay. And I was like, I'm going to pretend I'm happy. I said, Scott, let's put up the Christmas tree tonight. I'm going to go to yoga, get the tree out, and we'll decorate it together when I get home. And I'm going to just pretend I like this. And it, I was like faking it, but I was actually kind of in, you know, you pretend you're mm-hmm. happy. And I was like, I actually kind of feel happy. And um, came home. He had the tree up and we started decorating the tree together. And we decorated and we're done. And Scott's sitting there and I'm like, okay. The ring was hanging on the tree, but I put an ornament right in front of it. I didn't see it. That's like a really <laughs> difficult spot to hide an engagement ring. It has lights and sparkly things all over it. Like I'm not noticing this thing. It's a big ring. So he doesn't know what to do. So he just goes and takes a shower to think about how to get me to find this ring. Meanwhile, I end up taking a picture of the ornament hanging in front of the ring because I can't find its matching counterpart. And I text it to my mom and say, hey, didn't I have two like this? You know, this ornament we just hung up. The ring's in the back of the picture. <laughs> is it a camouflage ring? I mean, is it? you, you I, did see it. It's I right just, there. You know, you're not what are you thinking, for Scott? It. What are you thinking during this time? Well, I was getting nervous because I wanted to be, you know, like a surprise. But <laughs> it, was. it wasn't going very well. <laughs> I mean, it was a surprise, but. You hit it a little too much. <laughs> yeah. So he comes out of the shower and I've got this. Pit, and I'm like, oh, I texted my mom because I can't find the other ornament or. Or where we were debating of what the ornament was. I don't remember why I texted her, but I think something like that. And I'm like, look, I texted my mom and he says, are you, are you screwing with me? Like, cause he's like, <laughs> it, it's right there. Like he's thinking I'm just pulling his leg. Right. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, go look at that ornament again. Look at the ornament. I'm sitting, staring. What? What? I don't say anything. <laughs> what? 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 Finally, he's like, look. And I see it. And it was very exciting. Uh, I basically put my finger right on it and pointed. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, will you marry me? And it was perfect. And it was December 5th. And that's the day now we put our tree up every year mm-hmm. on December 5th. And it's our little ritual. I was shocked. And then ultimately I was scared. <laughs> to get married. How did you feel after the engagement? It was actually, it, it went, much easier than I expected. And I wasn't nervous at all by in the ring with her dad, you know, and none of it. I wasn't nervous about any of it. The only part I was nervous about is her not finding it or seeing it. Mm-hmm. But afterwards, it, it, I felt better, actually. Which so was, it's like you kind of processed all that fear. And then by the time you made that that decision you were going to go ahead with it, it was the fear was gone. Well, I kind of already made the decision that I wanted to be with her, I guess. Mm -hmm. And like nothing changed. It was it nothing changed. I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to freak me out, but it didn't. It was kind of the opposite. So it was unexpected Mm -hmm. that I was like, Oh, what was the big deal? (laughs) What was I waiting for? (laughs) So what was it about the other person that you fell in love with? Well, she was funny. We always had a good time together. Smart. Pretty. You know, I mean, everything. Yeah, everything. You know, we got along good. Even though we fought a lot, we still got along well when we didn't. You know, it it got better. So once we got past some rough hurdles. mm -hmm. It it, did. It does feel like it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, I think for me, what drew me to him was he's brutally honest, but there was safety in that and him being so honest. And mm-hmm. there's no, even when I, you know, wanted to get engaged and he didn't, he told me that he wasn't ready. There was never any secrets or um, games. You know what to expect. I knew what to expect. I mean, he was brutally honest to a fault sometimes, but it it felt very safe mm-hmm. and very comforting. I mean, he's funny. He's very likable. He's very loyal. He'd do anything for anyone. He's He is the cute one out of the three motorcycle guys now. <laughs> Trust me, I was just, didn't have my right vision on back then. So I think, but that was for me why I was pulled so much mm-hmm. towards him. 
There's no manipulation. There's no agenda. There's no, he's just honest. How has conflict changed for you guys? You guys have alluded that conflict was pretty significant early on, but now it's has gotten better. Has it, has it changed for you guys over time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we used to fight. I mean, like screaming and it would go on and on and we'd be mad at each other for days. And I'd want to talk about things at nauseam and he wouldn't want to talk about anything because he just wanted to let it go because he doesn't want to have conflict. And let's talk about it later. <laughs> yeah. And I know personally for me, a big part has changed is I'm just way I, I've found peace. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm I'm a much happier, more content person. So a lot of that me harping on him, I know he still probably thinks I do, but I feel like it's a lot less because I'm not trying to control every single thing about where he's going, what he's doing, what ever. And I think, I mean, that happened with just, I've worked on myself a lot, but I think I learned some good tips and tricks. You gave me, you gave me one of my favorite tricks, Jean, and you gave me my other favorite, like to, I tell what, people what are they? So yours was that we started using that worked was I always want to like deal with a, a conflict right away. And you had told me like that, that might be too much for Scott because the emotions are high and he needs, he ne- needs to process things. I want to you know, go into battle and fight it out and that I needed to back off, but he had to come back. He had 24 hours then to re-engage and like rectify the situation. So we started doing that where I would go, okay, I'll let it go. Like clearly. So you did an appropriate timeout. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we don't even have to really use it anymore because mm-hmm. I'll be like, okay, you're, let's talk when you're ready. And we don't even get that heated anymore, mm-hmm. but it helped us get from where we were to where we are. And then I'm going to probably say yours wrong, Ray, but I was with you. And when we had switched, Mm -hmm. you told me about the remote control, Mm. like, and that he doesn't have a remote control on how I feel. And that I I don't have to like all of his choices, but they're his choices to make. And I control how I'm going to feel and show up and be that day. And I, I would get mad at him and it would ruin my whole day. Why, why, why should him, whatever, going to have a beer with his friends ruin my whole day? Mm-hmm. I mean, or whatever it was, that's probably a bad example. But um, once I took back that, I started approaching things, I feel like, differently with him, where I'd maybe say, listen, what, what is bothered, what's concerning me is I don't want you drinking and driving. We both have company cars. Let's not drink and drive. Go have fun take an Uber, you know, is that okay? Does that work? And that dynamic change. And I wouldn't be upset. I would speak what I wanted. It wouldn't be like, you can't go out. It's, you know, and I took, I changed that a little bit. And then he probably doesn't realize this, but all of a sudden, like was gravitating more towards me. Like he'd be like, Mm -hmm. come out with me and my friends, you know, it wouldn't be like, get away from me so much because I wasn't trying to control him. I was just trying to control my own feelings with my remote. Did I describe what you told me correctly? And then there was no power struggle then in that case. Right. Can only have tug of war if you pick up the rope. Right. Right. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do do you remember that shift? I do remember it. Well, yeah, because we'd be she just come at me full force and I just wanted to punch her in the head be, to make it stop. Basically. I mean, I know I never did, but you know, it's, it just got me so mad and frustrated. We just scream at each other and not say nice things. And after that changed, you know, it was, I didn't feel like she was coming at me anymore. And then once, once I calmed down a bit, then we could talk, you know, then it was fine. Mm -hmm. But could you imagine if you were in a relationship with someone who wanted to talk about it later as much as you did, how there would be no relationship. And if you were in a relationship with someone who wanted to go at it all the time, you wouldn't be in a relationship either. And it's, you know, you see that in couples where you needed someone that was going to be that in your face to get you to take a step forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And he was just so steady that when, whatever you threw at him, he just he just stayed. But in turn, you guys had to develop your own process between the two of you and find that balance point that works for both of you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. How old were each of you when your parents divorced? I think I was, I was four. I was 13. And, and what did you guys learn about relationships from your, from your parents and what they went through? I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be like them divorced basically. Cause as a kid, I didn't like it. So I didn't want to be like that. So it, it actually made me work harder at the relationship. Take your time, I, find out if this is the right one. Because I could have just gave up. Yeah. What didn't you like about it as, <sighs> as, as a child? I mean, I didn't like any of it, really. You know, being different families, not being with my dad, you know, uh, having a stepmom and a stepdad. You know, it's just difficult for me as a kid. Did, you know? did they get along? Did they have a lot of conflict? No, they get along. Yeah, they get along fine. There wasn't, there wasn't really fighting. It was a, it was a, a good divorce, you know, if there is, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't ugly. So, so that was good. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw my dad on the weekends, but I wanted to be, you know, a normal family basically mm -hmm. Yeah, is what it ended up being. So, and I, you know, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to fail at my relationships, I guess, if I got married, when I got married. So. That's why it's probably why it took me so long to get married. So, yeah, I mean, my mom and dad had there was zero conflict, but there was zero kind of relationship. So I didn't ever see like a healthy, loving. Like I didn't ever see anyone hold hands or kiss. I, I think I saw my parents kiss once before they got divorced. So. I mean, I found out they were getting divorced. I was watching 90210 on a Wednesday night in my bedroom and they said, we're having a family meeting. And I thought like I'm like my curfew was changing or something. I was 13 and it was, we're getting divorced. You can go back and watch your show now. And you had no idea. Mm -mm. Well, no, we were, we had actually just a few months before had done a two and a half week road trip to Arizona to look for houses. We were going to move to Arizona. So I think they were trying to either figure out if they were going to move to Arizona and work it out or get divorced. I, I, I don't even exactly understand that, but I think that's why for me, it was a struggle to like show affection or like want to hug or, you know, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like it was just always, I never thought like that wasn't normal for me. What changed in your life after they split? My mom got together with my stepdad. Then my mom and I had some, some conflict. And I mean, a lot, of, a lot of things happened, but what ultimately ended up happening is that I had to move in with my dad because my stepdad had to take his two daughters because they were in a, a bad situation. And so there wasn't enough room. So I went and lived with my dad, which now I, I get everyone's perspective. But at the time, you know, it felt like it felt like my. How did they approach that with you? Well, I was at my dad's house because my mom and I had been fighting and I just found out that I had to move all my stuff into my dad's house because they had to come immediately. So it was, it was abrupt. And, um, so I, I had a hard time with my mom cause I felt, I felt like she picked my stepdad and my stepsisters over me. I know that's not the case now. And I know that she was trying to do the best she could with her situation, but as a kid, you know, doesn't feel very good. So yeah, it was, I, I saw a lot of weird things and I, I, I felt, I think that's part of the issues that I have this, I had this perception that, you know, people wouldn't <clears throat> come through for me or mm -hmm. stick by me or something like that. That makes any sense. Which would make sense why, you know, Scott being very direct kind of makes you feel more safe yeah. in the relationship. He doesn't keep anything, you know, to himself. Right. How has uh, intimacy changed in your relationship over time? Well, uh, those scrunchies aren't being used very much. <laughs> Maybe an upgrade to hair clips or something. I don't know. 
You didn't ask him our very important question. All right, let's start with that one. Okay. The basic question of how soon into the relationship did you guys have sex? Oh, very soon. I mean, that happened when we were hanging out when I was 18 and he was, you know, whatever age he was, do the math. So the first motorcycle ride? No. No. No, probably we hung out maybe a month or two. We'd meet up at parties and stuff and then okay. that happened. So then he was just a redo. <laughs> redo. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Journal right. entry 24. <laughs> so, redo. And, and you guys have been together now for how long? In, in for total. officially 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. Okay. And so intimacy does evolve and change in, in couples' relationships over time. How has it changed for the two of you? It's less than it was before. I mean, less frequent. Less freaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god! I'm just saying. You're asking. I'm saying. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's less frequent. Um, I, I mean, intimacy when it comes to like sex is less frequent, and maybe what Scott said. But I feel like there's a diff, like another side to intimacy mm -hmm. of like sure. it's emotional intimacy. Yeah, right? and com like comfort, like being comfortable, raw or something that makes sense with each other, mm -hmm. that I feel like has grown where I'm more comfortable in that sense. So the shift is more developmental and it turns into more, it starts out real physical and then it turns more emotional and whatever. Yeah. How do you guys navigate friends of the opposite gender? Like having them? Mm-hmm. What do you mean by navigate them? I mean, I don't... I don't well, know. do you guys hang out with people right. of the opposite gender? Do you either oh, yeah. one of you care? Does it matter what you guys are doing? Yeah, I mean, we we hang out uh, with other people all the time. That do You mean like without each other? Without each other right. and more like one-on-one -on -one stuff, not like in a group. I, I I don't know that you do so much. I I mean, for work, I'm with men all the time, sometimes men and, you know, I'm on business trips with colleagues of mine, you know, out for drinks or a dinner or whatever. So it's, I don't really have that where you're hanging out with opposite gender. Yeah, not too often. Mm -mm. But when she does, I mean, I trust her. So I don't care, you know, mm -hmm. if, if she wants to take the chance and, and mess things up, then it's her choice. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't feel like that's been an issue. Like of all the issues we've had that had like the trust factor, I don't think has been there. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you've had, you know, Anna with work and stuff like that. I mean, not that you guys like would hang out, but I would never care. I mean, I, I, I think the trust is just like. I mean, she's out of town and, you know, drinking with mostly, mostly guys hanging out. And, mm -hmm. you know, it does. I don't think about it and worry about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What would you say are some of the unwritten rules in your relationship? You know, you would have to start me off, get me going. Well, I mean, one of the ones you guys have figured out is when there is a conflict, you give him space and then he's able to come and, and talk to you. So that's, you know, kind of an unwritten rule. It's not something that you guys set up. Well, I guess you did set it up originally, formally, right? Um, but for some couples, they might have unwritten rules like, you know, we don't, we don't go drinking without each other. Okay. It is just something that they need in order for their relationship to feel safe. I don't know. I had, I'd have to think about that a little bit. All right. So. Uh, honest. D. I mean, I know that's like a broad, right. like, don't lie, obviously. I've never really had to sit down and say, don't do that. But that's pretty expected. He He's good at, and I don't think we ever set this up, but I worry. I just, I, it's probably part of my job too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I underwrite insurance. So I'm like always thinking of worst case scenarios. So I am constantly in the state of worry of like something bad going to happen. So like if he's out, he went to like a three day concert. Like 
I don't care if you text me, you know, the whatever ghost emoji or something like that. Just shoot me a something and let me know you're okay. Like, let me know, you know, the eggplant emoji, whatever it could be. <laughs> just send me something every few hours, just like checking in. So I know you're safe. I know you're okay. And he's good about doing that. Of like, just letting me know. If, if he doesn't, you just send a reminder and it's kind of a non-event. He usually doesn't not do it. Mm. So if I say, just don't forget, I'll make sure. What's your emoji? Well, I send all different ones. <laughs> Sometimes they, and they make no sense. And it's it just makes me laugh because I send something really that makes absolutely no sense. And at first she's like, why do you do that? And I said, oh, it makes me laugh. It'll be like a Christmas tree and it's July, you know, or whatever. He just sends whatever he sees. He just clicks on. So you guys have been together f or married five years. It'll be five years in September. Yeah. Kids? No. No. How'd you guys decide that? I didn't want any. Ever. I did. I did want kids um, for a long time. And then I kind of told them if something were to happen accidentally, that I was not not keeping it, you know, and that was going to happen. And then time went on and our life went on. And the older I got, the less I wanted kids. We just kind of got set in our life and in our travel. Mm -hmm. And I'm surrounded by nieces and nephews and all that fulfill me to the point where I was like, woo. I don't know that I want this anymore. So it's a really conscious choice, you guys. Yeah. It, I mean, it was a point of contention for a while because I was like, well, what happened? I, did, I didn't want kids right that second when he was saying, but I had wanted them when I was young, like as a future forward thought, like I could see myself being a mom. Mm -hmm. But at no point was I like, I'm ready right now. But I was like, well, I wanted, what if I changed my mind? And the more time went on, I never really had the change of mind like, okay, I'm ready right now. It was like, mm, no, maybe maybe this will change. And then it just never, I guess it still possibly could, but let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back in your office. <laughs> Do you want to tell your story, Scott? No. Okay. Yeah, final question, Jane? How do you guys know your partner loves you? What do they do to show you that? Well, I think it's a bunch of just little things I do every day. What? <laughs> what does she do? You're supposed to say what I do. <laughs> oh, what you do. Not oh, what, you do. what does, she what does do your partner do? You know she you. loves you. Oh, I heard that wrong. <laughs> well, she makes dinner. She tells me. Which she never used to do. Like she had a problem doing it first. You know, always checks, make sure I'm okay at work. You know, just all the little things add up. She reaches out a lot. Yeah. She yells at me a lot. It means she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I actually was thinking about this the other day. Like, of all the things that you know, you question or you worry or whatever like that. I never worry that he doesn't love me. And I like to pinpoint why I don't, it's like a feeling. Like I could just feel it. Like I feel that he genuinely like is attracted to me, loves me as a human, wants good things for me, probably because of all the reasons we talked about before. I mean, he's always showed up whenever I've needed him, you know, and he's never let me down, you know, for all the big things, of course, you know. I wish him and the dishwasher would stop being in a fight, but you know, there's those little <laughs> things that I wish he would do, but n nothing that really matters, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, Scott and Tiny, we want to wholeheartedly thank you for joining us today and for listening to Couple Synergy. Sharing stories has been part of the human experience since the beginning of time. We hope that by you sharing your story, it has enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. For all of you listening, if you have any questions or topic suggestions, again, please feel free to leave a comment or look us up online at couplesynergy.com. Until next time. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Kedkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Kedkodian. 
along with Organizational Director Calvin Javier and Marketing Coordinator Bridget Reese. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.